So as of right now, Chris Paul is still on the Thunder, and rumors coming out suggest that it could be a bit of a challenge for OKC to get off of him for obvious reasons, his contract, his age, his health. So I figured I would look down the NBA and attempt to find a couple teams who could take on CP, but I guess I could also talk about the idea of him staying on the Thunder. Again, as I said in the previous video, whenever it was, I don't think a buyout makes much sense. It would kill the Thunder's cap for a long time unless CP left a gargantuan amount of money on the table, which I don't picture him doing. So anyway, let's talk about the idea of OKC holding on to CP, at least for some extended period of time. If anything, at least past December 15th, when all these free agents who signed can actually be traded. I mean, he could be a mentor for Shea Gilgis-Alexander. As far as how much Chris Paul really wants to do that, I don't know. He's always had the LeBron mentality of, I'm smarter than everybody else, so just give me the ball and let me do my thing. And I don't really know if that leads to being a guy who can really help out like a 20-something-year-old like that. I mean, you can certainly lead by example, but it would be nice if CP was a little less up his own ass, basically, to be a real teacher for Shea. So I don't know there. Now, if Chris was actually healthy for a whole year, he could make OKC still kind of respectable. I don't think I would pick them for the playoffs. Actually, I definitely wouldn't because, of course, uh, Paul George is not here. But even so, between him, Shea, Gallo, Steven Adams, Schroeder, that's still an actual NBA team. It might be like a 35-win NBA team, but that could be enough for people to still come to the games, which maybe the Thunder care about, and given that they've gained so many assets lately, they might be content with a season where they're not the worst team in the league, even if that compromises their pick for that year. I don't know. There is some value in holding on to the guy, even if it's holding on to him because you just couldn't find a trade. Like There is still a way that you can find the bright side of that. But at the same time, um, going full on with a rebuild, it definitely makes sense. So anyway, let's talk about potential Chris Paul trades. So it is difficult. I mean, going down the Eastern Conference, I see the Orlando Magic, the Miami Heat, which is the one team we've heard the most about. The Heat already have a few picks going out to the Clippers, and I'm sure they don't want to give up Justice Winslow or Bam, and I'm going to guess OKC wants those guys, so I don't really know what the holdup there would be. If I was Miami, I might be okay with giving up some draft pick depending on the protections for Chris Paul. I'm definitely not going to give up either one of those young dudes. So then at that point, how do you actually um, put the money together for CP? I mean... Between Dragic and James Johnson's money, you're already over $30 million. And both of those guys' contracts are pretty short, so I guess that would be the avenue for it. But I guess that one would just have to come down to either OKC realizing that Chris Paul is not that much of an asset or Miami realizing they might have to give up something that's kind of good for the guy. I don't know what the resolution there would be, but I do see a way it could happen. So with the Magic, it could be the idea of like waiting until mid-December and trading Fournier and Terrence Ross and whatever else to match CP's salary. And then you've got CP to throw the ball to Vucevic, Gordon, and Isaac, and he can be that last thing that kind of elevates that team. Now the obvious argument is he's not on those guys' timeline. Very true, but with how desperate the Magic have been for talent at point guard, and maybe they would be optimistic that they could keep him healthy for a few more years. Yeah, it's an idea. We move on to the Western Conference. I mean, if the Spurs were desperate enough to just keep on being this, like, sixth seed with old dudes, then they could combine some salary and make it happen, but I don't really think they would want to do that. There is a case to be made for the T-Wolves with the idea of they just really want to get another good player around town, but... There is an argument to be made that the potential of Andrew Wiggins, however fleeting it is at this point, is still higher than one or two years of Chris Paul. And the only other way you could do that without trading Wiggins would be to put together some of your shorter contracts, but 
you'd probably just want the cap space. And that's about all I got. I mean, it does take a pretty precise team to want Chris Paul at this point. Like, you got to be a team that's kind of stuck, like Miami or the Magic. But even then, neither one of those teams are going to give OKC really what they want if this ever happened. Or you have to be a team that is one old point guard away from being title contenders, or they already are title contenders, and sure, I might have some 30-second blurb on the books, but I don't really think it has a possibility of happening, and I don't see any of these other contending teams in the West really wanting CP, so there's a chance he doesn't get moved, and perhaps OKC just has him on their team, and could that hurt them a lot long-term? I mean, I mentioned earlier he might get him to 30-something wins rather than, like, 17 and being the worst team in the league. And there's some reason why that could be good, especially with the picks that they do have coming in. So there's that. But, you know, Miami, Houston, and the Clippers, there's reason to believe they all three of those teams could be either not in the lottery at all for the foreseeable future, could be a doomsday scenario with one of them, all three of them, whoever. It would just be nice to have that one guaranteed very high lottery pick with the Thunder just being bad. So to not have that, it hurts you a little bit. But there's definitely other ways to get star players. I mean, number one, stars get drafted outside the top ten, outside the lottery, whatever, enough to where you think you can be the next one to do it. But besides that... OKC is going to have the ammo for every star player that becomes available over the next couple of seasons, so they'll certainly have ways to uh, still make some splashes, but I guess the chances of them getting the number one pick not as high. To be fair, with how random the lottery is at this point, simply getting in there might be enough to where you could be projected to get the, I don't know, 10th pick, but you end up with the third pick, so... Maybe OKC is still content with that at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, if if Chris Paul's on this team, I don't think it kills the Thunder's ideas of rebuilding. It just throws a little extra thing in there. And some of it could be positive. So, I don't think OKC's in some horrible spot. Like, I'm sure they feel very good about the next however many years. So, Chris Paul's here for now, and we'll see what happens.